Welcome beautiful people. How are we doing today? For those of you new to my channel, I want to say thank you for joining me. This is Skelly by Nature. I am Skelly. And if you're looking for a dog food that's fully nutritional, but not only nutritional, helps beat common ailments with dogs, plus fights fleas and ticks, things like that, then stay tuned and I'm going to show you my recipe that I make for my dogs that they love. So let's get right down to it. I'm not going to tell you the ingredients separately. We're going to go as it, we're going to continue on as we go and I'll explain everything to you because I'd like to explain why I use what I use and excuse the dogs because they're excited. They know they're getting fresh food today so they know they love it and tell them that's exact proof right there. Uh, these guys have been eating this diet for well over eight years, except for my baby. She's only two, so. Uh, but they both get very excited every time food comes out. Um, so, let me see if your dog gets that excited as well. You can tell me that later on in the comments down below. If this is a video you enjoy at the end, please do me a favor, hit that like button. If you aren't already subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. And feel free, share this video with other dog lovers and, and other friends who may be interested in this uh, recipe. Uh, so let's get right down to it. So what we're going to do is, as you see, I have a lot of stuff already kind of prepared. And I'm going to break everything down for you. And I'm going to show you why I use what I use and other things that we can use. So keep in mind um, what we're going to do is, first of all, um, get yourself a nice big bowl, okay? So we're going to have a nice big bowl. Um, I also use three, three pounds of meat. Um, I choose uh, either like a turkey or a chicken or sometimes I get like liver or, you, you know, any other stuff like that. I do stay away from a beef because I do have a girl that might, I believe might be allergic to beef. So do be careful with beef and chicken. Those are two common meats that dogs sometimes can be allergic to. So pay attention to that if you're new to feeding your dog a homemade diet. Also, if you're giving your dog a homemade diet and you're just starting off and they've been on kibble, then do your dog's digestion a favor. Um, introduce it slowly. So feed them their kibble. Give them a little of the of the of the of the, of the food, and then. To, then add a little more and take away a little bit of the kibble until you're at 100%. But my dogs typically get this um, and no kibble at all. Uh, so, and my dogs have lived very, very beyond their healthy lives. Uh, it has also been proven that feeding your dog natural food um, will add two to three years onto your dog's life compared to, say, feeding them a kibble. Okay, so the first thing I want to start with is... Um, in my bowl, you'll see I have some greens. Uh, you want to you wanna do about a cup of, of what we call dark greens. Um, that would be something like a kale, a spinach, um, cabbage. Um, green beans will actually fit into that category as well. Uh, so you can do something like that, but you want a, a dark green vegetable. Um, and with that, I put directly into my bowl. Today, I'm using a, a mixed kale and some spinach and a little pak choy that I actually grow from my garden. So that's at the bottom of my bowl as you can see right there. Um, and so the next thing that we're going to do is I do uh, a, a mixed lettuce, uh, I'm a mixed vegetable. Uh, and today I used, um, I always use carrots, so I always use three carrots, three large carrots. Uh, the reason I like to use carrots is uh, Carrots do a lot of have a lot of benefits for our dogs. They like to they're, they're good for cleaning their teeth. Uh, they're good for regulating bowels. They're good for their eyes, and it cleans out their digestive system. It helps with say like parasites inside their intestines. By like us dogs don't completely break down a carrot. Um, so what happens is as that carrot goes through their intestines, it it, it acts like a scraper and goes through their scraping wall. So I always include in ca carrots in, in my meal every time. Uh, and then I change up what I use for their, their vegetables. So today we're going with, um, I used one cucumber, I used one summer squash, and I used a couple pieces of, of cauliflower to kind of top it off. But basically I'm looking for roughly about eight cups. Uh, so we're gonna take that eight cups and we're gonna dump that eight cups right into the bowl. 
we're gonna do that. Now, we're gonna put it all in and then we're just gonna mix this all up. So, uh, again, you know, mix, I mix up my, my veggies and stuff like that every time, you know, give them something different, change it up a little bit. Bobo, find a bowl. So the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna do some mixed fruit, okay? Now, the mixed fruit today, um, again, this is something that I mix up different mixed fruits. So after, the, if you are gonna be doing this, do yourself a favor, uh, take a look at the fruits that are good for your dog and not good for your dog, because I do change mines. I do a berry mix, which is what I did today, which is strawberries, blueberries, raspberries, and blackberries. Uh, sometimes I do what I call my Hawaiian mix, which is more of mangoes and a little bit of pineapple and some oranges and some apples. So I like to change it up again. Um, the, each, each piece gives a little different um, benefit to your dog. Uh, the one reason why I do like berries is berries again or your fruits have a ton of vitamins, a ton of minerals. They help with hydration. Um, they, they're good in fiber. They, they help with good gut health. They, they help better free radicals in our body um, and they fight bacteria uh, and and some some fruit some fruits actually do help fight against certain types of cancers so what we're looking for is roughly four cups um, of of a fruit and we're gonna dump that right into our bowl and I got my little cleaner over here so my little so I got a 15 year old Puggle who, one reason why I started making my own dog food is because he suffered from seizures. Um, and it's something that I started doing research on why dogs have seizures. And I switched my foods and this has helped him tremendously. He hardly ever has a seizure and he's now about 15, he's just about to turn 15 in a couple weeks. So he's a dog that's been suffering from seizures at the age of four and he's now 15 years old. So. Um, I'm going to say that this diet is keeping him alive longer than what is expected. So I would not imagine he would still be alive today if he was eating kibble. There you go, buddy. Have another bowl. So now that, now that we got our fruits and vegetables in, what I'm going to do is I'm going to now start adding in some of the uh, herbs and spices. So one thing that you're going to notice is um, when... When you're doing a meal, and to be a complete meal, you see a lot of these people, um, a lot of recipes online that they have, you know, it's meat, it's a little vegetables, and it's a little bit of fruit, maybe some rice, something like that. Um, the reason I like to use herbs and spices is there's a lot of benefits from herbs and spices that you're going to get that you're not, that you don't get from other foods. Um, and the other thing too is, is in one problem with these recipes is you don't want your protein, you want extra proteins. You don't want just meat to be the base of your protein. You want it to be probably about 80% of your, of your, of your diet, but you want other sources of protein. So you're going to see other things in here that I've included, um, that add extra proteins, um, extra vitamins and minerals and things like that. Part of it is, is you're mixing things up. So there's things that I do um, to help it, it, it think different ailments by using different types of things um, a, as far as herbs and spices, whether it's a, a salmon, whether it's another you know seed, things like that. So what I do is I like to attack things with more than just one ingredient, okay? Um, so with that being said, what we're going to do is we're now going to start adding in some of the, um, the different mixes that I do. So one of the things that I, I like to have is I like to use, um, eggshells. Uh, I take my eggshells that if I'm making eggs, um, I take some eggshells and put them off to the side. And what I do is I take my eggshells and I, today I have, uh, today I have six eggshells, um, and what I'm going to do, and what I'm going to, what I did was I boil them first, I put them off to the side under a towel, let them dry for a bit, and then I grind them up in, with my pistol and mortar, making them almost to a powder. So you're going to see that it's a, it's a very fine, it helps with the digestion. But the advantage with eggshells is they're, they're a great source of protein, they're a great source of calcium, 
they help with uh, you know in better bone health. They actually help with teeth, their teeth and, and joints and muscles, and they also improve their immune system. So we're gonna put some of that right on top. I'm gonna I just sprinkle it right in. Okay, so we're just going right over the top of it. And so the next thing that we're going to do that I like to add to my dog's food is I like to use um, hemp hearts. You can go with hemp hearts, you can go with flex seed, you can do also you're going to see I'm going to be adding in some pumpkin seed. Um, so these actually carry good benefits. Again, it's another source of good protein. They have good fats in them. They're very rich in minerals. They have amino acids, which helps for, you know, so you're going to get good health, good heart health, uh, it, it, it inflammation, helps with allergies. If you have a dog that's an excessive shedder, uh, it, it's going to help in that. Now. So we're going to throw those right in, uh, sprinkle that right on top. So we're good with that. So like I said, and we're going to also add in pumpkin seeds. Now pumpkin seeds is something that I like to use a lot. Pumpkin seeds actually do carry a lot of great benefits. Pumpkin seeds are very heavy in, a, in omega-3 for our dogs. They're a good source of fiber, a good source of calcium, natural oils, and zinc, copper. So it helps, you know, helps fight against uh, heart, uh, heart, heartworms, helps helps boost the kidneys, it helps eliminate kidney stones, it also helps with UTIs as well. The other thing I like about pep, uh, pumpkin seeds is again, just like carrots, pumpkin seeds, they don't break down completely in their system, so when it goes through their intestinal, intestinals, it helps clean out any detoxins, any carcinogens, anything that's, you know, uh, gunk, what we call stomach sludge that gets that gets mounted to the walls of their intestines, helps scrape away that, so it's helped detoxifying that stomach, which in turn gives us, gives them better gut health. So we're going to throw those right on top. Now we got that on top, so we're good there. So I was explaining that I like to use a lot of herbs and spices. So again, I'm a naturalist if you don't know. Um, and if your dog does suffer from any other types of ailments or um, you know problems like skin issues or something like that, feel free to drop a comment down below and I'll get back to you with some, you know, a, a herb or a spice that you might be able to add in yourself um, that would help benefit your dog's health. If not, um, you can stick with what I'm gonna use. So I have in a bowl, I have a little mixture. And so in my mixture, I have, I, I have a two teaspoons of turmeric. I have two teaspoons of curly parsley. Make sure it's curly parsley, okay? You have regular parsley, which, which is called spring parsley, or, or also it's also known as Italian parsley. Um, that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for a curly parsley. I grow again, I grow curly parsley in my garden, so I cut it and I use that for my dogs. Um, and then I also add uh, two teaspoons of ginger, and I also have two teaspoons of garlic. Now I know a lot of people are very concerned about garlic, oh I have two teaspoons of cinnamon as well. So I know a lot of you uh, might have a little concern about garlic, um, so keep in mind that the, the amount that I'm giving you is going to be what you are needed for your dog's weight. So basically what you want to do is, um, you know, I'm making a bowl that's going to last me and my dogs only a couple days. But if you have a smaller dog, it's going to last you a lot longer. Um, so there's going to be less in there. But I also put in a little less garlic. Um, I use garlic actually to help fight parasites and fleas and ticks. Um, it helps detoxify the body, it decreases cholesterol, it helps fight against tumors, and it also helps, again, remove bad toxin wastes inside their system. And I actually use just a, under about what you should use for the, the proper weight of your dog. And the reason is, is because not only does garlic do, do what I just told you, but parsley, the curly parsley acts as, as the same against, like I said, um, you know, curly parsley is high in vitamins and minerals. It promotes liver. Um, 
health. It also help, it helps with their vision and it helps increase their immune system. It helps with blood clotting. Um, and it also, again, it fights against fleas and ticks. So I, I don't add as much garlic as, as I, could, I could go. Um, and that's partially because I'm also using parsley. So again, I'm using garlic and, and I'm using parsley as my means as a natural way to fight against fleas and ticks and parasites. So, you know, if you're worried about the garlic, um, you better, you know, you can always take a little bit away and you can always make your own adjustments as you feel needed and feel comfortable with. So we're going to throw some of the herbs and spices in. And so to give you a little bit, um, so one reason why I like to use turmeric is um, turmeric has um, curcumin, which helps in inflammation and helps fight against tumors. Um, it's something that there's curcumin isn't found in too many too many ingredients, so it's something that I do like to use turmeric. It's again I have an older boy he's 15 years old, um, and so I am trying to help with say sorenesses that he might have, any any built up um, tumors that might be coming and things like that. So. Um, and the cinnamon I like to add because cinnamon is something that, again, cinnamon is another herb that you want to be very cautious of. Don't go overloading with cinnamon. Keep your cinnamon at very low um, levels. Um, but it does help with, say, dogs with arthritis. So it's a, cinnamon is something that I use because I've got an older boy. If you get a younger dog, you may not want to add the cinnamon. You can leave the cinnamon out. Um, but I like to use it because I do have an older boy because it helps against fight against arthritis. It helps with muscle sores and swelling. Um, and the other reason I like to use cinnamon is because cinnamon was what I found. Like I told you earlier, my dog, Bobo suffers from seizures. And one thing with cinnamon is it helps neurological disorders. Okay. So if your dog has something like, like I said, it, it is, is, it has something going on in a neurological issue. Um, cinnamon is a good thing that go that to, that you can add to help to help your dog. Um, it also helps fight against obesity, and it also helps dogs with di who have diabetes. So that's another good thing about cinnamon. Um, and again, it's it's a good source of uh, you know of vitamins and minerals that you you know that will help your dogs in better health. So with that being said, we're gonna move on to the bulkier stuff. Um, so the next thing that I'm going to add is I've got one cup of salmon and I like to use salmon because salmon is just great for omega-3. It's, it's a great source of omega-3. It's a great source of vitamin D. It helps with the dog's skin. It helps with the irritations. It helps with itchiness and allergies and different things like that. Um, and again, I'm not using one meat as a, my source of protein. Okay. So it's again, it's adding another great source of protein. Um, and what I do is, um, with salmon, I know is it's good for their eyes as well. Salmon, another good thing with salmon is we, we, as humans, we have, uh, we have regenerating cells that help repair our body. Um, and as we get older, those regenerating cells don't help, you know, they're not, they're not around anymore. Uh, so with the salmon, it actually helps build better regenerating cells. Um, that's one reason why we get, as we get older, we start losing our eyesight a little bit because we don't have those regenerating cells. So again, the fish helps with their eyes. It helps with their mind, um, in regenerating cells. So I like to add a little bit in again. So we're going to throw that in. I got, I got a half a cup. Um, if you want, you know, what I do is, is I'm one that, um, I, I'm trying to add fish a little more to my diet. So it's a good excuse for me to go out and, and buy a, a, a fish fillet or a couple of fish fillets and I, I, I fry them up and I use very little herbs and spices um, and I add it to my diet. And what I do is I cut some pieces off at the end and leave them for the dogs. So I try to, like I said, half a cup. Okay, so we're going to go on to the next thing. I'm going to mix them around a little bit. So... Uh, the next thing that we're going to add was going to add sweet potatoes. Basically, I use roughly four to five sweet potatoes. Uh, what you're looking to do is fill up a medium-sized sauce, uh, saucepan. Um, and what you're going to do is fill that up with water, and you're going to boil it for probably about 15, 20 minutes until it's the, your softness. 
Um, as you can see, I don't break mine up completely. Um, Bobo and Tierre both are chewers. They're not swallowers. They chew their food. So I don't mind making them in pieces. But if you've got a, a small dog or a dog that might be, say, an aggressive eater, one that just kind of grabs his food and swallows it, you may want to mash it up. You can mash that all up and give it to them in that way. But like I said, I keep mine in a little bit of pieces. So we're going to add that right in and put that in right on the top. And so now we got our sweet potatoes in there. Now the nice thing about sweet potatoes is sweet potatoes are, are the, the carbohydrate that you're looking for. They're, they're very high in vitamin C, vitamin A. They got a ton of antioxidants and great for great source of potassium and fiber. Um, it's also a great source of magnesium. So there's a lot of good benefits that you can find in the, in the, in the sweet potatoes um, that I like to use, say, compared to using brown, brown rice or something like that. Um, so I used to use brown rice, but I switched to the sweet potatoes because it's just a little better for them, a little, little more beneficial. Um, so last but not least, we're going to add the meat. Uh, I have three pounds of turkey, uh, so what I did is I don't do a raw meat um, for the same reason that I don't do, that we don't eat raw meat. Um, we don't know what kind of bacteria or anything that you know other things that could be in that meat. So I do like to throw it on in a pan, throw it on the stove top, and on a very low to medium heat. Um, I cook it just enough that it's just just cooked. If, if you look at mine, um, you'll actually see it's still a little tinge of red to it. Um, so it's not completely, completely cooked. It's not burger, okay? So I do keep it a little consistent, a little consistency of, of redness to it. So we're going to add that right in. So now that we have everything together, we got it all in a big bowl. Now, I'm just gonna go through and I'm gonna mix this up. And I, I, I give it a good, I, I turn my bowl as I'm mixing. Um, I probably go around about, about three times. Um, I use a little nook with a little pouring piece. And I use that as my little turn to indicate when I've gone around. But I go around three times because Part of the reason is I like to really mix up the everything that's in it and get it really spread out. Um, you know, you got the eggshells in there, you got a lot of the herbs and spices in there, um, you know, and, and get it all mixed in really good so you're not, say, over, overloading on one thing. Um, and get it all mixed up really nice. So once we have this mixed up, um, I'm, I'm going to tell you a couple little things extra. Um, when you're, when you're doing this, one of the things that I suggest is, is freeze your fruit. Okay. Um, and part of the reason is, is because if you use, um, berries and you put them in and they're not frozen, you end up with a, a puree, a puree, um, which if you're okay with that, then go right ahead. Um, I like to freeze, I freeze my fruit. I also like to freeze the, my dark greens. Um, and part of the reason is, is because when you freeze your kale or your cabbage or your spinach, um, and you keep it in a bag, all you gotta do is just break it right up. You can, you smash it right up with your hands, it breaks into pieces. So you don't actually have to put it in the processor. Um, and another thing that's good to know is a couple little tricks is when you're, when you're doing this, um, the nice thing about having the frozen, uh, the you know the frozen fruits and you're gonna have cold vegetables because I don't cook the vegetables either I, I put my vegetables in the blender I blend them right up um, so they're nice and cool so the the idea is is I pre prepared everything today so my meat was cooled down the potatoes were cooled down but when you do a frozen the frozen fruit um, and you add everything to it the, the heat of the meat and the coldness of the of the fruit and you mix it all up uh, makes it so that it's it's cool enough that you can feed your dogs right away. Uh, you don't hear them right now. Uh, Bobo typically is usually whining at this point, uh, knowing that his food's coming because he loves his yum-yums. 
Right, Bobo? Do you like your yum-yums? And so Bobo's over here licking his lips. You can't really see him. Um, so I'm going to, you know, again, I'm going to mix this up and, and, and really give it a good mix and mix everything really good. And so with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, and again, if you, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please feel free to subscribe down below, pass this on. There's going to be a lot more. I'm going to, I am going to be doing different types of recipes too for, uh, recipes for older dogs, a puppy recipe, um, if you've got a dog that has uh, any illness and, and you feel that he needs a special diet, feel free um, to drop a comment down below. I will answer you. I'll get back to you um, or even do a video for you um, and show you because I've got different types of recipes for, for different, types of, different types of ailments or different types of dogs. But again, now that we have this complete, this is a basic recipe for you all. And you can make adjustments as needed. Um, if you say you have a young dog that might be a bully breed, you might want to bulk up that protein a little bit more like I do. This is a good source of protein for them. Um, or if you say have an older dog that might be a little on the heavier side, again, you're gonna, you are gonna might want to eliminate some of those proteins or some of the fats um, that are unnecessary. So with that being said, I hope you all enjoy this. I hope you go down and hit that like button for me. For those who haven't subscribed, please hit that subscribe button, button down below. Pass this video along. Share it with your friends. Feel free. Let's get this out and let's get some healthy dogs. And for all you beautiful people, see you next time.